Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So I've been inspired by a tweet in which a person used a Blender, a plugin called Speedful, and a bunch of modifiers to do the animation similar to what you are watching right now. For details, you can go through the tweets whose link is provided in the description. I use the animation node to replicate that animation and make it 100% procedural. The proceduralness can be observed by watching the demonstration and I hope you have already done that so that you know what you can actually do after finishing this tutorial. Due to the request, I decided to make a tutorial for this. One thing that I have to mention is that the core concepts of such kind of animation have been explained in my tutorial of Rocket Tree's loop animation. So instead of repeating the same explanation, the focus of this tutorial will be about making the presets to speed up the workflow while remaking this type of animation. The time markers of each preset will be attached in the pinned comments. I hope it serves as a reference for the future live noding or even some tutorials. Also, as an additional note, that some of this preset has been used in my fan spline animation live noding. So let's start. So I'm going to hit Control, and the first preset that we're going to make is called a spiral. So basically, it's just a kind of creating a helical kind of structures with height. And you can increase the resolution so you can observe these headaches. So let's do that. Let's take a group input and then let's take a distribute matrices. And we are going to change the type to spiral. So you can see the distributed matrices itself has a function of spiral. The issue is that it does not contain any information of height. So we have to add such kind of information by ourselves. And to add a height, we're going to use a fold range. And I'm going to change the type to stop and put the amount to amount and stop to the input. So I'm going to name that as a height. And then I'm going to take a offset matrices and activate the locations. I'm also going to combine vector. So plug the list to do Z. I also would like to add a option of offset. So let's take a boolean and take a switch. So let's take a uh, translation matrix. And I'm going to replicate this combined vector. And then I'm going to add a fold mass divided by two. So basically it's uh, divide height by two and put into vector, actually negative two. And then we're going to connect this vector to translation and the matrix into if true. So let's name this boolean as offset. And then we're going to take a transform matrices, put the output to transformation. I'm also going to add an additional transform matrix for future use. I'm going to put this transformation into the inputs. And then I'm going to add an output. So now we got our matrix, but I also would like to add a vectors. So let's just simply decompose matrices. And let's put the translocation, which is actually the first socket, into the place. Let's name just the vectors. And we get a kind of sort of idea. So let's name that a spiral tutorial. And let's just try to hit W and go to the right, evoke this program. And let's take a look with the node that we created. So let's have the height. So now we have a spiral with the offsets. And you can turn that off. If you would like to change any default number, just hit the use and change all these values here. The reason I add a transformation is in case if I would like to 
So let's take a rotation matrix. It's just in case if I would like to change the orientation of this helix by any chances. You can also change the location as well, but these are for your choice. So you use one node to achieve many, many different functions. So this is the basically the first node that we created for this entire animation. Next thing that we're going to do is change the transformation of these matrices. So let's take an offset matrices. And I created an empty, which is called a controller. So let's take a look with the matrices that we're looking at right now. So let's take the amount back and change the size to one. And change, uh, let's make an offset. Also change the radius to zero because we only need uh, a line actually. To align with rotation. And then we're going to take an object controller for. Actually, let's not use the an empty. Let's generate a UV sphere because it's the kind of final things that we're looking for. So let's take our sphere and plug that to 4. And I'm going to change the scale. And the scale is the part that turns to be very interesting. So let's take a vector form value. And I'm going to change the size to very large. And you can also change the form width. So you can see there are some of the matrices which whose scales actually has been enlarged a lot. So you might wonder what are we going to do here? Is we're going to replicate the matrices for these entire things. So let's take everything down very little. And then we're going to take a distribute the matrices. I'm going to change the type to circles. And then let's take only three vertices. Next step is uh, replicate the matrix. Put the matrices into matrix and the matrices into transformation. And then our circles, the circles that you can observe, will be instanced to every point that we have been generated through our spiral with an offset. So you can see now this is basically how it looks. So let's turn down these values a little bit. So basically, and we can use a radius to control this entire whole thing. So let's change the radius to small and uh, change the scales. So basically, this is the principle of this entire animation. The next thing that we're going to do is to connect all these points together to generate the spline. So the, there's another preset which is called helical connection that we're going to build. So in this preset, you can see it contains iterations because it's a loop node based preset. So let's simply just uh, hit a loop input. And in the parameter, I'm going to hit this plus icon and take a vector list. Be aware it's the parameter. And then I'm going to take a spline from points because we're going to use these vectors to generate different splines and that's why we're going to use loop and and the iteration will turn speed amount of splines we generated but we are going to filtering out some points so that only some of the points will form a specific splines and the rest will form the other splines and so on so let's take a mask lists and index mask for evaluate for so these three nodes, I'm going to put the index to the offset because it changes with each loop and the iteration will change with the step. And the fourth goes to the fourth. I'm going to change, make a list and change the type to locations so that we can put a vector list to the place. Strength to the mask. And now basically we can output our splines by hitting this plus icon. So let's take a spline list. And here are several things we are going to do because this radius sometimes can be a list, but in the loop node or group nodes, you cannot you can only choose a either a float or float list. So here we're going to do something differently. So I'm going to hit both float and the float list. So you can name that as a radius and the other as a radius list. Uh, radius list. And I'm going to make it boolean.
and to name that as a, radi a uniform radius. So in this case, I'm going to hit a switch. So if you ask for a uniform radius, then you put a uniform radius to the spine form points. And then I'm going to duplicate these entire whole things and put the list to the points. If you are looking for different uh, radius of the splines, then I'm going to put the un to the, radi uh, the radius list into the radii. And now we're going to define the which spline to use. If you're asking for uniform radius, then you put the spline with uniform radius to place. Otherwise, you put the others. And basically, this is the way to work. And there are some other options that I think is important is whether it's cyclic. Actually, in this particular case, I think cyclic is not meaningful. So let's forget about this. The next thing that I would like to do is to smooth bezel spline so that it does not turn to be too jaggy. And obviously, you can organize these trees better. So I could put these ends and put uh, the uniform radius bootings to the top. And I think this is it. I mean, this is the preset, so it's hidden in background. So in this case, let's just name Helico con Connection Tutorial. And you can hit Control A, and then we can find a Helico Connection Tutorial. So basically, this is, I think, the same node. Yeah, I think this is it. So, oh, there's also one thing that I have to mention. I would like to have a sample vector list for previewing. Because if we are making splines, you cannot literally use 3D Viewer to preview the splines. It does not work. And there is also no viewer data which is available. So in that case, we are going to use some advanced feature of the loop. Uh, I will explain in detail in a separate tutorial about these advanced features, but so far you just need to follow what I'm doing. So in this parameter, I'm going to hit this plus icon, and I'm going to take a vector list. Let's call that sample vector. Okay, And then I'm going to hit N, or it's also possible to hit U, it does not really matter. Usually, actually, hit U is faster, but I think it's kind of hard to observe. So let's hit N, goes to Node, and within the place of sample vectors, let's deactivate inputs, but activate this output and hit this reassign button. So now we are creating an output, which is called sample vector. And then I'm going to put this list to the sample vectors. So now we have an output, which is called the sample vectors. And then the iteration will always be the amounts of vertices of our circles. So let's put the matrices into iterations, and then it will automatically generate a vector uh, get less length node. And I'm going to put the matrices into the vector list. It will also automatically decompose itself. So now we can take a look with our sample. Let's take a let's just use the old 3D viewer. So now you can see the sample vector has been shown up, and this is just the one list of three totals. So now let's make actual splice uh, curve objects outputs. And let's activate bevel depths and let's hit this plus icon to generate targets. So now we have five splines being made. And in this radius, let's hit that to 0 0.1. So here let's let's change the default value by hit N. Let's go to 0 0.1. And uh, I think this is good enough. Basically, this is the next step is talking about how to animate these entire whole things. There are many different ways of animating this entire whole thing, including a method that
that use the transformation that we have been generated at the most beginning of this tutorial. So let's just take a translation matrix. And by animating this z-axis, we already get what we are looking for. The issue, however, is so let's go to the camera view and uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Is that if you activate the rotations and if you rotate that, you can see it's actually not working. The reason is that this, the transform matrix node, uh, transform matrix node, this entire series node, whether you're actually working with transform mesh, transform spline, transform vectors, they all work based on the world origin. And once you activate a location, then the action of rotation will also be offset upwards in this case. So things become very weird. There are many different ways to solve this issue, including uh, my methods in reality use a uh, follow spline so i'm rotating a spline for whatever whatever stuff and i made a preset for that but i also realized there's actually an easiest way to do this so instead of rotate here so let's just deactivate the rotations i'm just simply going to put the another transform matrix and compose a rotation metrics separately. So let's clean up these locations. And then now I can rotate these spines easily. And I can activate this Z translation separately. So basically this idea. The hierarchy is important. You have to transform the location first and then rotate later. Otherwise I believe it will actually cause a lot of problems. Like what you're seeing watching right now so the hierarchy is kind of important or the order is kind of important so so final recap about what we have then done this is a preset workflow so if you have already if you already have all this preset then this entire node tree will only look like this huge these many nodes but of course in reality it takes much more nodes than you think actually not very much um, much better but uh, if you have made them into presets that you need them to save on the files and I do not recommend uh, you to uh, append the node trees in the future and so on it's just uh, whatever stuff so I hope you have watched the preset basic tutorial already so you know the kind of principle of making presets and so on whatever final recap about this entire animation the fourth width and offset is very very important in this case and the radius there are many different values that you can tweak like the amounts of splines through these vertices the radius so you can tighten that the resolution can also be important but in this case it's i, I think it's not very prominent the angle you can change that to 100 it does not really matter it's just a higher amount of angles then more uh, resolution the amounts you should have uh, many different things you can potentially try uh, another thing is the fourth width so so let's turn this to low the value is kind of very important uh, fourth width let's take that fourth width is also important it basically exp expands the entire whole thing offset can also be important there are many different values you can play with. I think this is it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.